Rub up your engines! Well, Jaguar says they're betting the future on electric cars. Well, it looks like their future is getting pretty dim. The Jaguar I-Pace, their electric car, their sales declined dramatically the first quarter of 2022, which is over now. It's 37.9% less they sold the first quarter of 22 than they did last year. And right, electric cars are supposed to be making them better, making them more, selling them more. They're actually selling less. I guess the old Jaguar snob appeal name isn't what it used to be, and the electric car people People probably like, I don't give a crap about a name like Jaguar. I want a good car. I don't want something that's made by Jaguar. <laughs> or as the English say, Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> and following in the footsteps since it's called Jaguar Land Rover, that's the name of the company, Land Rover sales are down 35.6%. Maybe people are finally wising up, not buying those piles of crap. <laughs> now realize, the Jaguar Land Rover group, they're not that big. They only sold 79,008 of them in the quarter. In the car manufacturing world, that isn't that big of a deal. And as for the I-Pace, they only sold 2,000 of them. Not in the United States, 2,000 of them worldwide. Maybe the world is wising up to the myth of Jaguar. Maybe electrifying was the smartest move for Jaguar. If you follow motor news, last few years, a lot of people are saying, why do they just shut Jaguar down? I mean, it's stupid. Why do they even make them? You know, just basically using a name, you know, doesn't really mean anything anymore. Most of the stuff that they're selling is made in China anyways. It's just kind of a myth of what they're selling out there. And their sales are, as I said, follow the money. Like I've said for ages, if you don't like a product, you know what you can do about it? Don't buy it. Corporations make money if you buy their products. If you don't, they don't. So don't buy it. You don't have to worry about getting stuck with their junkers. Well, if you saw the new Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer L, they're humongous. They're a foot longer than the other ones. They're big. They got them out there, and they've got the new turbo engine that Chrysler has. It's the brand new Hurricane Twin Turbo. But there's one problem. This twin turbo engine is made in Mexico, and I don't mean the thing is made in Europe somewhere, and then they're assembled in Mexico. They're actually made in Mexico. <laughs> they're using a process that, if you watched me ages ago, I had a 2013 Shelby Cobra GT500, and it had the V8 engine, and it had this plasma core where they had bonded a thin molecular layer of iron on the aluminum block so it didn't wear out. They're using the same type of process where they bond aluminum on. Rather than put stainless steel or, or cast iron liners, they're just bonding it up. Knowing Chrysler, I, I, I wouldn't trust that this process lasts long because if you remember the old Chevy Vegas that burnt oil like mad, they coated those, they all burnt oil. So I wouldn't be surprised if these engines in the future start burning oil like mad. It is an all new one, but on the other hand, it's made in Mexico. A lot of stuff can go wrong and since they're actually being manufactured in Mexico, I'd be kind of leery. And of course, they say, well, they get uh, better gas mileage than the old V8 ones. Yeah, not by much. They're still tremendous gas hogs, especially in the real world with twin turbo. You can test the turbo engine on the dyno and get some good gas mileage. Get that turbo on the road, you step on the gas and those turbos are spooling out, your gas mileage is going to go down the toilet. So they're big, they're gigantic, they probably get horrible gas mileage, but worst of all, the motors are made in Mexico. I would not trust these. So if you want to fork out all that money for the Grand Wagon Air, I'll go right ahead. Just when it falls apart, don't say you can blame me, because I'd warn you not to buy one in the first place. <laughs> More S14 says, I got a 1999 Lexus and it pulses. It only got 45,000 original miles. Wow, that's something that old, right? It pulses and the lights flicker. People say it can be an alternator, put in a heavier one, or change the oxygen sensor. What do you say? An old saying, test, don't guess. Any mechanic like myself, or even a discount auto change, they can blow test your alternator and battery Free. Those lights are pulsing when they're doing the test, because you do the test with the headlights off and then on. It'll show whether there's a problem in the alternator. It could be the diodes, brushes, anything. It'll tell you if the alternator or the battery is bad. Test it. Now, if that test is okay, you could have a problem with the oxygen sensors, but generally the oxygen sensors will not make the lights flicker. Of course, any bad short can do that. It can get very complex, but I know Lexuses, they're well-made vehicles. The weakest point of that car is the alternator. My wife's ES300 is now on its third alternator. Now, yeah, it's 20 years old, but Toyotas, sometimes they go through zero alternators in 20 years. So that is the weak point. Uh, it's probably the alternator, but test. Don't guess. It's stupid to guess. You just throw money away, and it's such a simple test that any mechanic can do in two minutes. Francisco says, I got 2011 Sienna, two-wheel drive. 
Should I get OEM or aftermarket brake pads? Steering wheel shakes. I think the rotors are resurfaced once. Should I replace only the front, not the rear? What should I do? One, I would never resurface them. If a guy did resurface them, he's not a very good mechanic. Cars nowadays, the rotors are a lot thinner. They used to be thicker. Of course, if they're thinner, they're cheaper to make, and they weigh less, so there's less rotating mass. You'll get better acceleration and a little bit better gas mileage. So they make them thin. When they warp, you got to really replace them. Turning them is stupid. As front versus rear, yes, your stopping power is the front. So the front rotors are going to wear out nine times faster than the back. So unless you got a million miles on that thing, you could probably get away with just replacing the front rotors. Now, OEM versus aftermarket depends on how much you want to spend and the kind of lifespan that you want out of. Now, if you want the longest lifespan, go back to OEM. But you don't have to go and buy the outrageous price at one dealer. I just changed them on a matrix that we have. 15 years old, they've never been changed, right? And I found a Toyota dealer somewhere in the United States, I just googled it, that had them 50% off. So I got them 50% off with free shipping. So they were only like 49 bucks a piece. I could go to auto parts store and I can get $29 piece ones, but they're cheap Chinese ones. They will not last as long. I mean, they're okay, but they won't last long. So kind of price around. If you can find a better OEM price, Go ahead and do it. They will last longer. If you do go to a discount auto parts store, though, if they have a choice to say, we got $29 and $59 ones, buy the $59 ones. They're better made. Ramey says, our Volkswagen's known for oil leaks. Historically, they've been all kinds of oil leaking as they age. They're little engines. They got more pressure. They rev higher. So, of course, things are going to wear out and leak a little bit faster. That's kind of the nature of the beast. I mean, all vehicles eventually leak oil just because the seals get dry and they rot and they start to leak out. And the problem with Volkswagens are, whoo, the money you can spend. Take like a Toyota. You got an engine and a block, right? Then there's an oil pan that bolts on the bottom where the oil stays, right? And there's a gasket or they use silicone sealer and something. But that's it. Many Volkswagen engines have the block. Then they got one part oil pan with a gasket. Then another oil pan under it. Ridiculous design. If that middle oil pan gasket goes, you got to take the engine out, pull it all apart. It is a royal pain in a wazoo. Why Volkswagen does that? Because they're Germans and they can't. They'll engineer anything any way they possibly can so they can make money. And they have weird ideas. Why would you have a two-piece oil pan when you do it with one? It's beyond me. But Volkswagen's will leak oil as they age. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, especially the smaller engine ones, because they rev a little bit higher, and things are going to wear out faster when they rev higher. Believe it or not, they're recalling bicycles now, <laughs> okay? I get sent stuff all the time, and I try out a lot of electric bicycles to see what they're like, and generally, they're pretty good, but there's a company called Fido, F-I-I-D-O. They have Fido X electric bicycles, right? Well, they sent me one. Granted, it's a lower-end bicycle. I guess it's like $600, $599 bicycle, and the other ones the Chinese sent me were anywhere from $1,500 to two grand, and they all worked perfectly fine. I had no problems with any of them. This Fido company, they just recalled all their bikes because they I snap in half while you're driving down the road. No, it was bad enough they sent me one, and the electric boost didn't work at all. So it was basically a seven speed bicycle folded in half, kind of like a clown, something a clown would be driving at a circus, right? But it had no boost. So, I mean, I like my other ones better because they're boosts, especially a cop, a fat gator, a little electric motorcycle, scooter that can go 50 miles an hour. That thing's a scream. The Spido, it didn't even work electrically, but now I learned that they can break in half because they're folding bicycles. You're supposed to fold them, put them in the back of your car, and then unfold them and drive them around. Great idea, you know? But it turns out that these just break apart while you're driving. They had to recall all of them. Now, they could this was only 2,989 of these that they sold. <laughs> so <laughs> they're recalling less than 3,000 people who bought one of these Fido X's, put it away. All right, it might break in half while you go down the road. Now they say they're going to replace it. And if they don't have enough, they'll replace it with a cheaper version and refund you the difference in price. Notice they're not going to fix them. I mean, Jesus, they're selling these things for 500 bucks. They'll probably make them in China for 50 bucks. You know? They're not going to bother fixing the things. They say that you got to take the pieces off that latch it to prove that you're not driving anymore and send them to them. Then they'll give you another one. Even their process is flawed. You know, you got to send us the parts first before we send you one. So yes, they do recall electric bicycles and the company sent me one. And it's a good thing that I keep up with the news because I didn't get a notification from them that said the bicycles break in half. I just read it when I went through Google News. So beware of the Fido X bicycle. It might break in half and leave you in a rather precarious position. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.